Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to the TikTok Workshop. Right, today I'm actually cracking on with the first practical exercise in the BHI distance learning course. And I know what some of you are thinking, wait a minute, you started this in January, you're only just getting around to doing the first practical exercise now. Well, yeah, let's be honest about this. I actually did this video a few months ago. What you should be disgusted by is the fact that I haven't done the second exercise yet, but we'll work around to that. Right, in this exercise, we've got to make up a set of hand levers. We're mainly going to be working on our filing skills today, a skill that's going to be essential to us all the way through the course, so let's get stuck in. We're starting off with a piece of silver steel that's 5mm in diameter. Silver steel is also called tool steel or drill rods and is great for making things like punches, levers and screwdrivers. I marked off the length that I needed with a pair of calipers and then cut it, leaving a bit of extra just in case the sawing was a bit wonky. Now what you see me doing here is something that you shouldn't do. I've got the piercing saw and I'm holding it horizontally. Now I can lie to you and tell you that I just wanted to test to see if it made a difference if you sawed horizontally, but the truth of the matter is I was too lazy to go and find the hacksaw and I paid the price for that because this cost me a couple of saw blades. So if you're ever using a piercing saw, make sure you keep the blade in a vertical position. And the other thing you can clearly see is the fact that I've got really wobbly tables. This was the clip that sparked me off to finish the workshop, because that wobbling really started to cheese me off after a while. But anyway, on to the first bit of filing. So I've got the rod clamped up nice and snug in this cross slide, and I'll be using the edge of the slide as a reference. I'm going nice and slow, trying to keep the file square and watching how the file removes the material. We're learning here, so there's no need to rush through anything. Watch, listen and feel and everything will start to come together. Right, next I mark up the end of the taper. This is where I want the filing to end. Hopefully, if all goes well, we'll end up with a nice even taper on both sides of the rod, starting at the centre of the rod at one end and ending at this point here. I'm using an old saw blade here to help me line up the centre of the rod with the cloth side. I'm just under halfway because we want to leave 0.2 to 0.4mm thickness at the point. So with both ends of the taper lined up with the top of the cross slide, we can start filing. Same as before, I'm concentrating on keeping the file flat lifting off the pressure between each stroke and taking my time. You can probably see that I've covered the top of the slide in a bit of electrical tape. This is my training wheels. Every time I put a bit too much tilt on the file it showed on the tape and this really helped in letting me know when I made a mistake and it also protected the cross slide a little bit. This seemed like a good opportunity to test out a load of random files that I've got lying around. I've got some nice shiny new files but I've been saving those for brass. I found that it can be pretty difficult to see how an old file will cut just by looking at it. But by the end of this I had a pretty good idea of how these files handled and I picked out a few favourites. So after getting the taper most of the way there I moved on to draw filing. Draw filing is this movement I'm doing here, a constant light pressure back and forth. This technique will give us smooth square edges and nice straight file marks that will be easier to take out later. It's much easier to see and feel high spots when draw filing and using a file with a fine cut I was able to file the taper flush with the cross slide. A few strokes on a stone and we're ready to move on to the next side. So I lined everything up in the cross slide and repeated what I did before. Now to be honest, this isn't the most accurate of rigs and it took me a couple of goes to get an even taper, but finally I got there and I moved on to the bending. But if any of you guys know of a better way of doing this, please let me know in the comments. Okay, let's try and bend this the way that it's suggested in the coursework. No, no, that's not, that's not working, no, 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 I'll, I'll for. Right, we're not doing it the way that is suggested in the coursework. Right, the problem is that you're trying to clamp a round surface against a wedge in a vise. It's just not having it. However, if I drop the whole setup into my cross slide, voila, first go, no mucking around. 
So when bending this, the lever's gonna wanna try and lever itself out of the vise. So I've stuck a bit of downward pressure on here when I bend. And next I mark out the location for the notch in the end of the tip. I start the cut with a triangular file. And after I've removed most of the waste material, I finish things up with the tip of a rat tail file, which is round and tapered. A bit of a tidy with a fine stone, and we're ready to chamfer the other end. Right, I've got the rod in the vise at 45 degrees here. I've stuck a bit off my combination square on the table to give myself a guide for the angle. You can't really see it on the camera, but I've marked a line around the circumference of the rod at the ends to give myself an end point for the cut. I'm keeping the file flat and I file to the line. When that cut is done, I rotate the rod and put a chamfer in every 90 degrees. If you were to look at the rod from the bottom, you should get a square shape. So then I'm going to take that square shape and I'm going to file the corners until I've created an octagon. You won't need as many strokes to take these corners out, so dial it back a little bit. And the last step is to smooth those final corners into a nice even cone shape. A bit of sandpaper to finish everything up and bang, my first practical exercise was complete. But one isn't enough, so I cracked on and knocked out a couple more. I've clearly got a lot of work to do to get my filing up to the level that I need to make some nice looking clocks. But for my first practical exercise, I'm pretty happy with that and I'm feeling enthusiastic about cracking on with the second exercise, making up an engineer's square. And if I haven't got that video finished by next week, I've given my wife permission to smack me in the face with an egg whisk.